It took the Muslim Brotherhood eight decades to come into power in Egypt. When it finally did, President Mohamed Morsi lost it in one year, overthrown after days of protests. So what lessons can be learned and what does the future hold for Egypt? We we'll look at that and what message this sends to political groups across the Arab region that are inspired by Islam. This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Well, they stepped out of the political spotlight last year, but now Egypt's military leaders are back. Mohamed Morsi, the country's first democratically elected president, was overthrown in a military coup on Wednesday. It's a spectacular fall for the Muslim Brotherhood, a movement that took power in Egypt only a year ago after decades in the shadows, only to have it pulled from them so dramatically. And less than 24 hours after the army stepped in, an interim leader was sworn in. The new man at the top, Hadli Mansour, is one of Egypt's longest serving judges. Mansour takes over after the military said that Mohamed Morsi had failed to meet what it said were the demands of the Egyptian people, although Morsi acknowledged that he had made some mistakes. Five months into his leadership, he decreed his presidency be given sweeping new powers. But the public backlash led to an annulment a short time later. And Morsi was accused of crony cronyism because important government jobs went to people within the Muslim Brotherhood or its supporters. There was also a failure to restore public safety. Instead, crime rates rose. Perhaps his biggest mistake, though, was failing to fix the economy. It was already in crisis when he joined the presidential race, but Morsi's focus remained largely on politics. Well, for more on this, I'm joined by our guests from Cairo, Hisham Qasim, a journalist and publisher from Cambridge, Abdul Wahab El Effendi, a professor at the University of Westminster and a specialist on Islam and democracy. And from London, we have Fawaz Jerjis, director of the Middle East Center at the London School of Economics and Political Science. Good to have you all uh, with us, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Hisham, uh, sorry, Abdul Wahab uh, El Effendi, if I could start with you, where does the, 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 the Muslim Brotherhood go from here now? Well, I think they, they, uh, they should rethink their position. I think they, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood has committed some mistakes and has committed some stupidities, but I think their opponents have engaged in what uh, is clear criminality and there's difference between stupidity and criminality. But they shouldn't um, uh, commit any more stupidities by uh, trying to uh, face the army or trying to confront the other groups. They should now recognize that they have, uh, they have failed, they, their gamble have failed. They should do a lot of internal rethinking about uh, what went wrong for them. They should probably try and change their leadership uh, because the leadership uh, should admit its uh, faults and, and, and change, and then they should re-enter the foray anew. I don't think the Islamists can be counted out, and uh, they will uh, continue to play a role. Uh, the military acknowledges that they cannot uh, dispense with them, although they have been siding with the other uh, party quite openly and overtly. But uh, it is true that uh, the, the previous regime have tried for 60 years to suppress Ikhwan. Uh, they haven't uh, succeeded, as uh, was seen from the results. Any attempts to suppress Ikhwan by force are going to fail, but they can make uh, problems for themselves, as Mursi has done. You talked earlier about the criminality of what's happened here. What, what do you mean by that? Because the, the military are saying that they are simply carrying out uh, the will of, of millions of Egyptians who demanded Morsi's removal, and that's what they've now done. I think there are two sides here. There was a criminality in the sense that some sections of the opposition have been burning this, uh, the, uh, the headquarters and other uh, centers of the, par the ruling party. Uh, the police have been looking on at some time complicit. A lot of shootings has happened, a lot of killings have happened, and, uh, but the army itself uh, should have negotiated a settlement uh, between the, 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 the president and his opponents. It was the opponents who refused uh, to, uh, to, to compromise. The army accepted what they uh, wanted to say because they are threatening 
to burn down the, the, the presidential palace and they are threatening to close down the government. So there was a lot of blackmail there. The army uh, has to choose whether to fight the larger number or to deal with a more disciplined group, which is the Muslim Brotherhood, who are more disciplined and can be uh, dealt with. The others are out of, out of, completely out of control. Uh, so uh, they, they have decided for the easier solution. Hashem Qasim, those who demanded uh, uh, Mohammed Morsi's removal, and there's no disputing uh, that there are huge numbers of them, um, haven't they essentially uh, deposed a legitimate government by illegitimate means? Uh, well, to begin with, I think the uh, move, the, the constitutional coup that Morsi had on 22 November, where he gave himself unprecedented powers, uh, and a move basically that Mubarak never even dared to do, was the, a coup in the first place. However, instead of trying to address the issues of the country, poverty, malnutrition, and all the serious priorities, political and economic, Morsi fell out with basically the pillars of the state, the judiciary, the media, the military, the police force, uh, the Al-Azhar, the church, and uh, that was draining his energy, and he ignored these issues, and eventually he had an angry street in the millions that simply wanted an early election. And in the end, there was no option for the military well, but to sounds, intervene to avert a crisis. It sounds like crisis. what you're saying then is two, two wrongs make a right here. Uh, I really don't think that the country could have lasted another year under Morsi. He alienated himself from the Gulf and ruined any possibility for economic recovery. The matter was deteriorating further and uh, it ended in probably the, the safest way it could have. All right, but the, the, the Muslim Brotherhood are arguing that they won successive uh, elections. They played by the rules uh, of democracy only uh, for it to be forced out by opponents who, who couldn't play as well as they did uh, in the ballot box. And so they turned to the military for help. No, certainly not. By besieging the constitutional court, for example, one of the many things they did, what did that, did that have to do with democracy? Uh, there was a ruling that was going to basically nullify a constitutional committee in which the Muslim Brotherhood, and I have my reservations about saying the Muslim Brotherhood because it's really supposed to be the Freedom and Justice Party. However, the, the, the constitutional committee that they did form uh, was going to be ruled null and void, they besieged the courts uh, with Media City where they feel they're coming under con uh, continuous uh, attack from the media and criticism, they besieged the city. More journalists uh, under Morsi have been charged than in the history of Egypt. So I I'm not sure they can claim they played by the constitutional or uh, the democratic rules. Fawaz Jerjis, a lot of people have been in skirting around uh, the word coup here and whether this is, uh, in fact, a military coup. The Egyptian military certainly have been very keen uh, to put out the view that the popular will is what is operating here and nothing else. President Obama uh, and a number of other world leaders have avoided uh, that term. But are, are they just avoiding calling a spade a spade for diplomatic reasons? Is this a military coup as you would define it? It is a spade. Uh, it's a full-fledged uh, military coup. Uh, uh, Hazen, there are two questions we need to address here. We need to address the performance of President Mohamed Morsi in the last one year, the mistakes, uh, the blunders uh, that he uh, made, his own worst enemy, uh, blind and deaf to the aspirations uh, of, of millions of Egyptians. Uh, he did not have any a competent economic team, no original ideas mastered the art of making enemies uh, and blunders. Uh, really, Mursi Hazim was the wrong man, uh, uh, a false player uh, to lead Egypt at this particular revolutionary moment. No doubts about it. And in fact, he was not one of the most qualified uh, members uh, in the Freedom and Justice Party to start with. As you know, he was the third choice of the party as opposed to the first choice. The second question is, we're talking about, so we know the mistakes. Uh, uh, we know that he has committed many mistakes, but the reality is what the military did uh, last night was basically to cancel out the will of the Egyptian people, uh, to undermine the very foundation 
uh, the institutional uh, uh, rules and regulations and procedures. Uh, uh, I mean, the question is, uh, um, he was elected by 51% of the Egyptian people. And also, Hazem, the military had other choices, policy choices. In fact, he could have exerted pressure on both Morsi and the secular leaning opposition to uh, forge a consensus, a roadmap, to address the legitimate concerns of the opposition. Checks and balances on Morsi fetters his hands. Um, a new prime minister acceptable to the opposition, a new attorney general revisiting the constitution. The military basically wholeheartedly bought the opposition case and ousted Morsi. Not only ousted Morsi, he put him under, uh, the military put him under house arrest, and we have reports now that hundreds uh, of Muslim brothers have been arrested. What do you call this? Mm -hmm. It is a military coup um, uh, because the military ousted the first democratically elected president in Egypt's modern history, and there are well, major you ramifications. You, you bring up a number of points there, Fawaz, that I want to hopefully uh, expand on. But let's just take a look at the regional uh, perspective of all this, because uh, some people have perhaps prematurely called this the end of the Muslim Brotherhood's project in Egypt. Uh, and that may have some uh, regional politicians uh, inspired by Islam worried. Uh, we're going to look at this now. In Tunisia, the Islamic Ennahda government has appointed a number of ministers from the opposition, but the divide between secularists and conservatives has grown wider after the revolution. In Libya, where the country is still ruled by an interim government, Islamists have not made the political gains seen elsewhere in the Middle East. But in Syria, people inspired by Islam form a major part of the opposition. Many say they would play a central role in any government that replaces President Bashar al-Assad. And in Morocco, a government that favors Islam in politics that came to power after the Arab Spring is still struggling to deliver on uh, its promises. Uh, Fawaz, if I could come back to you then, what, uh, what implications, uh, or, or rather what precedent uh, does this now set, particularly when we look at this from a, a regional perspective? Really tremendous implications has it. Uh, in fact, I would argue if there is one particular point I want to make is that the Islamists' brand has been damaged. The Islamist brand has been damaged for good. I mean, think of the celebrated narrative of the Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamists. Competent managers, administrators, merchants, they basically run things well. Uh, they run on a platform, bread and butter, employment, transparency, inclusiveness. Uh, Mohammed Bursi said, give me three months and you'll have a Nahda, renaissance. Here is the record. Even though he inherited a broken country economically and financially almost bankrupt, the economic situation uh, has been exacerbated as a result of his economic mismanagement. The fact that he multiple centers of power. We don't know whether President Morsi was in charge or even the other members of the Muslim uh, Brotherhood. Throughout the Middle East, what you're going to see is really a backlash. People are taking what the Muslim Brotherhood has him, has been tried now and found wanting. The emperor is naked. They have no original ideas. I mean, think of the ideas economically and politically. Mohammed Morsi pursued similar policies to that of Mubarak politically on foreign policy and economically. The same neoliberal uh, economic policies, he exacerbated the situation. And I think whether you're talking about Jordan, whether you're talking uh, about Syria, whether you're talking about Morocco, more and more Arabs are going to take a second look at this particular huge social movement, religious and social movement, and say, well, look, despite the rhetoric, when they were tried in Egypt, they, they were found wanting, and they also deepened and widened the cultural wars, the identity uh, uh, cleavage between the secular leading opposition and the Islamists. So the implications are very clear, even though I agree with Abdul Wahab. The Islamist movement has him, is not going to go anywhere. It has survived since 1928, despite decades of per per persecution. This particular movement feeds on persecution, right. on survival. The I base wanna, is very solid. I want to put some of this then to, to Abdul Wahab. What about this idea that uh, Mohammed Morsi and the leaders around him essentially brought all of this uh, on, the, on themselves with the way uh, they, they ran uh, the country, the fact that the economy has continued uh, to get worse uh, under his leadership, that he has led what has been perceived as a divisive government that has, has alienated uh, too many uh, Egyptians, that have been, there have been too many missteps uh, along the way. 
I mean, it, it's not surprising when you look at when you look at that that this is the the stage that we've gotten to, is it? Yes, I, uh, I, I said I think at the beginning uh, that there was a lot of stupidities, and uh, I, I agree. I think with was that uh, uh, Morsi and the Brotherhood has committed so many blunders, and I also actually written. Uh, about three months back to say that Juan has become a toxic brand in the sense that for the first time people find it uh, opportune to go and burn their uh, their headquarters uh, with impunity and the anger against them was so great uh, but on the other hand uh, I think the, uh, the being a toxic brand a certain Islamist brand being toxic uh, doesn't mean that Islamism cannot I mean we have got Abdel Munim Abul Futuh who is another Islamist. We got uh, many other Islamist groups. But on the other hand, I think in any case, the Muslim Brotherhood has come prematurely to, to power. And in all the countries where Islamists have come to power, even when they're in power, even in Turkey, they were always more like opposition than a government because they always have to confront the entrenched state apparatus in, 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 in Egypt, the, inter the intelligence agencies, which is now actually come into uh, power again, uh, because the army cannot rule. Okay, Who rules but always you, are the intelligence so, agencies. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but do, 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 you, the do, you, army was not do you believe? In do you believe that enough of them will remain committed to the democratic process? Because there is a fear that uh, many many of them in on the hard line, uh, many of the hard line elements within the movement will now turn to violence. Is is that a justified fear? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think uh, I don't think they will be that stupid. I know they have committed many stupidities, but if they do that, that will be the stupidest thing they will ever do. Uh, their enemies want them to do that, and I think over the years they have shown great restraint. They have been imprisoned. They have been uh, persecuted. They haven't resorted to, um, to to violence. So losing power is not uh, shouldn't be that problem. They can contest for it again. I think they they deserve. I, I'm, uh, let me put it frankly. They deserve to lose power. Uh, 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 the was rightly said they have committed so many errors. But what does what is not right is to have to go around the democratic uh, process. And I, I disagree with Hisham about uh, there being a constitutional coup. You can have a constitutional coup because the, uh, the president, although he, it was stupid of him to do what he did. He was in his powers. He was. He could legislate. He, he, he exercised his powers of legislation. All right. He then uh, uh, reverted back. Uh, but uh, the, the 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 essence is that they should be committed to democracy and continue to do so. Hisham Qasim, uh, do you have enough confidence in in, in the uh, the roadmap that is now uh, put in place as as the uh, as the army uh, calls it this interim period with with a, a transitional. Uh, government in place is this a, a government that has real power the, the the features of the government are still not clear but what I have faith in is that the military no longer are seeking power they want to go back to the barracks and then the most important thing is the shift that happened in Egypt in January 2011 when the masses moved they did not have a leader there was nobody inspiring them uh, and and uh, do they have a leader uh, now? Taking them out to the street, they don't. Again, so this is the phenomena that Egyptians have established that if they're not satisfied with whoever is in power, they will come out again because uh, these these people out there. We, okay, we have the Tamarud movement, we have the uh, National Salvation Front, but these cannot claim that they're the leaders of the 15 million plus who are out on the street until Morsi was deposed. Uh, so that is the best guarantee. The Egyptian government that has reigned supreme for 7,000 years is now hiding behind barbed wire and concrete walls. That is the biggest guarantee right now that whoever comes to power needs to deliver and needs to rule democratically. But the argument, though, is that uh, many of the people who, who are praising this move uh, by the military have very short 
uh, memories in that um, we had the military rule for uh, uh, over a year, 16 months, uh, in fact, and there were accusations of, of various abuses uh, by uh, the, uh, the military, uh, uh, the military government in Egypt, the SCAF, uh, as it was called, uh, that, that uh, uh, many Egyptians uh, were locked up without trial. There were uh, stories of uh, abuses of women. Uh, there were uh, protesters who were killed. I mean, the list of things goes on. I mean, how much, how how much trust should there be in the military given given that history? Look, there is already an improvement, okay? When you compare 2011 to what happened now, when you had a brutal police force that moved against the masses and killed at least a thousand people, as opposed to the police force coming down with the masses and saying, we will protect Egyptians and, and protect their right to demonstrate against whoever is in power. Uh, so there is an improvement. I'm not sure how much of that improvement will be with the, the, the present uh, Council of Armed Forces, although it's a younger generation. We're, we really are talking a huge difference from a 70-something-year-old general to a 57-year-old general who is now heading the army. They seem to be much more efficient, and they've had the, the, the dress rehearsal, if I may say, uh, uh, an attempt before. So I think it will minimize things. But again, we need to bear in mind, Egypt shifted from a free country, from a, an authoritarian country into a free country. It's not yet a democracy, and there will be stumbling. There will be, unfortunately, ugly scenes, setbacks. But the important thing is the determination that has been shown by the street that they will continue forward to become until Egypt becomes a democracy. Fawaz Jirgis, given what you, you had said earlier, can anyone trust the system now? Uh, this, is, this is the challenge, uh, Hazim. This is the problem. Uh, democracy is a very fragile concept. It's like a baby. You need to nourish the baby. Trust, which is a major factor in democracy, needs to be uh, revived and, 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 and uh, established. Uh, and now, uh, well, we know that the military has been uh, now the, the king, uh, the power broke. In the last two years and so, the military toppled two major governments, the Mubarak government and now the uh, Morsi government. The question to uh, Egyptians, would any future government in Egypt basically be able to defy the military and limit its authority? Point one. Point two, uh, Hazim, one of the major goals of the Arab uprisings, of what, what is really uh, falsely called the Arab Spring, was to wean the military off the political process, to basically subordinate the military to a civilian leadership. Now you have millions of Egyptians, even your uh, honorable guest, saying that uh, calling on the military to oust a legitimately elected uh, government. Uh, this is a serious uh, problem because to me, as a, a historian of the Arab world, the military curse in Arab politics is as insidious as the oil curse. That is, in fact, in the last 60 years, what we have had in the Arab world is the rule of the military by other means, security apparatus. And that's why what I fear the most, regardless of what we think of Morsi, and we know the mistakes and the blunders he made, is that the whole idea of what I call institutionalized democracy, the whole idea of trust, the whole idea is you respect the will of the people has been undermined. How do you rebuild this fragile idea? That's why I'm concerned, and that's why I would argue the future is very right. uncertain, and I think that the well, next few months are extremely fraught with risks. Well, we've, we've, there's been no shortage of uh, opinions uh, on this uh, on Facebook. We're get, getting plenty of reaction, uh, so we're going to give, give you a sample of that right now. Achyar Hanif writes, they cannot even hide behind the facade of liberating the people. This time, Morsi, his party and his constitution each respectively won a popular vote in free and fair and free elections. Ahmad Kamaluddin says any leader politically elected should be allowed to complete his tenure. Constant dissolving of the Constitution would always result in instability. instability. Madhu Nikechi simply adds, Morsi is the cause of his catastrophe. And Murray Smith says, I see nothing but good coming from it. The people are demanding representation, not rulership. Nobody anywhere should settle for less. That is true democracy. 
Well, uh, that just about uh, does it, but I want to thank uh, all three of our guests, uh, Hisham Qasim, Abdel Wahab, El Effendi, and Fawaz Jerjis. And thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. As always, remember, if you want to send us your feedback, just email your thoughts to us at InsideStory at AlJazeera.net. I'm Hazm Seeker. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.